In this video, I'm going to be running through the top 10 most common topics assessed in the Life in the UK test. I'll present the information you need to know on the left and typical questions on the right. If you want to practice answering these questions yourself, I suggest you pause the video as soon as I finish reading the questions. One of the most common questions in the test are who the patron saints are of each country and the dates of the patron saints' days. On the 1st of March is St. David's Day, who is the patron saint of Wales. On the 17th of March is St. Patrick's Day, who is the patron saint of Northern Ireland. On the 23rd of April is St. George's Day, who is the patron saint of England. And on the 30th of November is St. Andrew's Day, who is the patron saint of Scotland. Looking at some typical questions, the first question reads, St. David is the patron saint of which country? We saw that this was Wales. The next question reads, what date is St. George's Day? We saw that this was the 23rd of April. Another extremely common topic is women voting rights, and it is crucial to remember key dates. In 1918, women over the age of 30 are given the right to vote, while at the same time men can vote from the age of 21. In 1928, the voting age for women is reduced to 21, the same as men, and this establishes a fully democratic voting system. In 1969, the voting age for both men and women is reduced to 18, where it stands today. Emmeline Pankhurst is an important figure associated with this topic. She was a leading suffragette, that is, a political activist campaigning for women's voting rights. Looking at some typical questions, the first question reads, What year were women given the right to vote? We saw that this was 1918. The next question reads, who is famous for campaigning for the right for women to vote? We saw that this was Emmeline Pankhurst. Questions on countries and cities of the UK is also extremely common. The things we need to know is that the United Kingdom is made up of four countries, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Great Britain specifically refers to England, Scotland and Wales. Capital cities of each country are London, which is the capital of England, Cardiff, which is the capital of Wales, Edinburgh, which is the capital of Scotland, and Belfast, which is the capital of Northern Ireland. Looking at some typical questions, the first question reads, what country does Great Britain refer to? We saw that this was England, Scotland, and Wales. The next question reads, Cardiff is the capital city of which country? We saw that this was Wales. One of the most common historical topics assessed is Elizabeth I and the Elizabethan period. Elizabeth I was a Protestant. She was one of the few monarchs who avoided religious and political conflicts. She is most famous for her defeat of the Spanish Armada in 1588, which was a fleet of ships sent by Spain to restore Catholicism. Her reign, known as the Elizabethan period, saw rapid expansion of the British Empire with new trade routes established and the colonization of the east coast of America. Looking at some typical questions, the first question reads, who was reigning when English settlers first began to colonize the eastern coast of America? We saw that this was Elizabeth I. The next question reads, when did the English defeat the Spanish Armada? We saw that this was in 1588. While extremely specific, questions on the Canterbury Tales are often asked. I guess it is just an extremely important historical work many British people know about. The Canterbury Tales are a series of poems about stories people told each other on their way to a pilgrimage in Canterbury. They are written by Geoffrey Chaucer and were also one of the first books printed using the printing press by William Caxton. Looking at a typical question, the question reads, which stories did Geoffrey Chaucer write? We saw that this was the Canterbury Tales. Questions on places of interest and national parks are also very common. You need to know that there are 15 national parks in the UK. The main places of interest are listed below. To avoid boring you, I'd suggest just pausing the video so you can read through the full list. For each place of interest, I suggest you are aware of what it is and where it is. Looking at some typical questions, the first question reads, how many national parks are there in England, Scotland and Wales? It's important to mention that there are 15 national parks in the UK and there are no national parks in Northern Ireland and therefore all 15 national parks are in England, Scotland and Wales. So therefore answer B is correct. 
The next question reads, which of the following UK landmarks is located in Northern Ireland? As I said before, for each place of interest, you need to know what it is and where it is. The only landmark you need to know about, located in Northern Ireland, is Giant's Causeway. Traditional foods of each country are also very common questions. In England, roast beef with potatoes and Yorkshire pudding, which is batter that is baked in the oven, as well as fish and chips. In Wales, Welsh cakes, which are a snack made from flour, dried fruits and spices. In Scotland, haggis, which is sheep's stomach stuffed with other parts of the animal, and vegetables and oatmeal. In Northern Ireland, Ulster Fry, which is a fried meal with bacon, eggs, sausage, black pudding, white pudding, tomatoes, mushrooms, soda bread, and potato bread. We can see over here roast beef and Yorkshire puddings. Here are Welsh cakes. Here is haggis. And here is Ulster Fry. Looking at some typical questions, the first question reads, Haggis is a traditional food of which country? We saw that this was Scotland. The next question reads, which two are traditional foods of England? We saw that this was roast beef and fish and chips. There are usually always questions on legal minimum ages. From the age of 18, you can buy alcohol, go into betting shops and nightclubs, vote, stand for public office, and be called for jury service. From the age of 17, you can drive a car and motorcycle. And often less commonly known, from the age of 16, you can take part in the national lottery, drive a moped, and drink alcohol at a pub or restaurant if accompanied by someone over the age of 18. Looking at some typical questions, the first question reads, how old do citizens of the UK, the Irish Republic, or the Commonwealth have to be to stand for public office? We saw that this was 18. The next question reads, what is the minimum age required to drive a motorcycle? We saw that this was 17. An important part of British life is knowing the main holidays, so there are usually questions on these. Christmas Day, which marks the birth of Jesus Christ, is on the 25th of December and is celebrated by families getting together to have a festive meal of roast turkey and mince pies and exchange gifts and cards. Boxing Day is the day after Christmas and is a public holiday with no religious significance. Easter is celebrated in March or April and marks the death of Jesus on Good Friday and Easter Sunday is his rising from the dead. Lent is the 40 days before Easter and is a time for reflection for Christians. It begins on Ash Wednesday and the day before Lent begins is known as Shrove Tuesday, also known as Pancake Day. Looking at some typical questions, the first question reads, which day celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ? We saw that this was Christmas Day. The next question reads, what are the 40 days before Easter known as? We saw that this was Lent. The final most common question is about national flowers. The national flower of England is the rose, for Wales it is the daffodil, for Scotland the thistle, and for Northern Ireland the shamrock. Here we can see the rose of England, the daffodil of Wales, the thistle of Scotland, and the shamrock of Northern Ireland. Looking at a typical question, the question reads, what is the national flower of Wales? We saw that this was the daffodil. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm on a mission to help you better prepare for the life in the UK test. I've made an easy to follow and enjoyable video course where I've completely stripped down the material to focus on what you actually need to know for the questions that are actually asked. To show your support, please subscribe to my channel by clicking here and to watch the next video in the series, click here. I look forward to learning with you and wish you the best of luck in the test.